Alright, welcome Biggity back, ladies and jiggity gentlemen, to the Jiggity GSL. I am Moltrap, with me is Kaldor, and we are kicking it here in Seoul, Korea, in the Mokdong Studios at uh, Hua... Ah, I forgot the name of the high school. We're actually based in high school, by the way. The, uh, the studio is actually in the base floor, the first floor of a school. Actually, the second floor of a school. I think it's... Ah, I forgot the name Don't of it. Don't look at me. I have no idea. I think it's Hua Song or something like that. It's Hua Song High School. I'll look it up. It could it's not be Hua Pong. Song. I don't know. But anyway, uh, we are having a lot of fun here today. We've got some excellent yep. games going on. We've had some really good stuff happen so far. We have a couple crushing defeats. We had some pretty close PvP earlier on, and I think this next series is actually going to be Really, really good, really close. It's probably going to be the closest series we've had thus far. We've got Slayers Brown versus I Am Lucira. And Lucira is in a lot of trouble because Brown's record <coughs> against Zerg is excellent. He never lost a competitive game against no. Zerg. No, 100% 100%% win rate. 100% win rate. He won all two games. <laughs> yeah, only two games. Those were the two games that we saw him play against um, Superstar. Superstar, a.k.a. Max in the first round of Code A this season, and he looked very, very strong. I was actually talking to Sella about uh, those games. I, 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 Since we haven't seen much about a Brown, I watched those games earlier to kind of get a feel for it, and I was asking Sella about it. I'm like, he looks like he's mostly a macro player, and Sella's like, yeah, he likes to macro, and um, you know, he's an all-around macro player, and that's basically what he did. He played, he went Forge Expand, barely got any units until he had full saturation, and then he started making a ton of stuff off like two and then three bases. And that's kind of how he played against uh, Superstar. So probably how we're going to see him play here today again. But you know what? Even though Lucera is the much bigger name, he's been in the finals. He's killed a lot of strong Protosses in the past. Sella told me that he, Brown basically doesn't lose to Zergs on the ladder. So he's going to have a strong opponent here. Brown is a little bit like parting. He's also one of the players that we yeah. don't have all that much data about. That a small joke with a 100% record against Zerg basically yeah. is because he only played two games against Zerg. So that's all we have got on him. But Lozira is also quite strong against yeah. Protoss. He has 77% no, win strong. ratio. He played 43 games, won 33 of them. And the last three games against Protoss were at the KSL against Sage and Sun. He won both of them in the best of one. And at the Code A, he took out Alicia with 2-1 to one as well. Just joining the lobby right now. The first map, by the way, will be Daybreak today. So, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be, uh, that's why that's what I was thinking, I think it's going to be close, because both these guys are really, really strong, so we're probably going to see some really high-level play. Both players can be very macro-oriented. Lucira likes to throw in the Roachling attacks and stuff as well, so it might mix it up a little bit. Might maybe mix it up a little bit. There's Slayers Brown, the Protoss player. How old is that guy? How old is he? I mean, I know with Asians it's always a little bit deceiving, um, but still, he looks really young. Well, he may be very young. I'm not sure. I'm going to check right now. He is... I have no idea. It's not listed on TLPD. Sorry. We definitely have to ask. He doesn't look that young. He's that. probably like 18 or something, I would guess. The first time someone told me how old Oz is, I was really baffled because uh, from the looks, I was like, okay, Oz is probably like... 17, 18, something like that. Why, how old is he? Oz is actually 22. Oh yeah? Yeah. Okay. I can see that. I, I would have thought maybe like 20, 19 or 20, right. I was really, really surprised. I mean, the guys from uh, FXO are good fun anyways. Uh, apparently now I am uh, Shoya's big uncle. He always calls me big uncle now. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have no idea. Um, uh, <laughs> Well, okay. in, in Korea, it's it, it was really weird. After Linux against Jakchi, we went eating with the FXO guys, and at some point, uh, Linux was to, uh, sorry, Ochoya was asking how old I am. So I told him, and he was like, "Okay, can I call you when I have trouble? Will you protect me? Will you beat up someone for me?" I was like, "Yeah, well, <laughs> well we can go for that." And so I was like, "Oh, you good? You good? You good, you big uncle now? You big uncle?" <laughs> and from that point on, he just continued to call me big uncle. And That's funny. Yeah, his next question was actually um, if I'm married, because in Korea it's a huge deal if you're not married by 30. Uh, really? Yeah, it's apparently a really big thing. Um, I was also told by friends that if I meet a girl, I should lie to her. I should not tell her that I'm 30 because it's such, it's so weird, and she would really? think, and she would think that I would uh, look for someone to marry. 
It's really weird when you come from Europe, probably the same with the, the I, US. I didn't so, know about that. That's interesting. Yeah, that's that was a really weird thing. So now I'm uh, telling everyone, yeah, I'm 27. Here we can see Lucira just uh, beat Felicia, another Protoss. Another Slayer's Protoss, actually, in the last Two round. To one. I think Brown, from what I heard, you know, we haven't seen a lot of Brown as much as we have from Alicia, but from what I understand, I think Brown is probably a little bit stronger than Alicia in his PVZ. So, uh, we're gonna see. By the way, a little tidbit of information. Both of the Zerg players that we've had today played Terran in Brood War. Is that so? Cezanne and, and Lucira both played Terran in Brood War. Yeah, uh, Lucira actually used to go by Thunder Foyu. And uh, now he's playing Zerg in StarCraft 2. Interesting little thing. Lucira also used to play the piano for many years. That's how he has such good finger dexterity. And now that I've baffled... <laughs> <laughs> I've baffled Kaldor into silence. I was like, what? We're going to go ahead and get the game started. Game number one on Daybreak is about to begin. Slayers Brown versus I am Lucira. Which of these incredibly strong players is going to make it into Kodas next season? We're about to find out. Right. Thanks, of course, to Razor, G Skill, Sony Ericsson, Pepsi, and all of you, the viewers at home. And thanks again to this player who has the wrong color because he's playing the red, but he's actually. Slayer's Brown. If he would join IM, that would be kind of a racist nickname. Could be. I uh, guess. It would be really, really weird. And yeah, some signs. Awesome. We've seen so many signs of the Codes final, but now we have the opponent of Brown at the top right of Daybreak. We have. I'm Lucira. I just like that voice. His name is Lucira, but he's trying to be Win Sira today. Or Win Era. Is it Lucira? Uh, that was a stretch. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, you know, you gotta crack a few A's to make an omelet. You gotta, you gotta try for for all the jokes in order to get the good ones. Oh! oh anyway, sorry. what's going on? No, nothing's going on. I'm oh, okay. sometimes a little bit thrown off by the fact that the game start <laughs> the, the game started a little bit uh, sooner for us before they actually jump into the game. So when I just looked at the screen in the production tab, I saw the pool about to finish, and I was like, "Oh my god, he's going for a seven pool!" And then I realized that the game is already two minutes and thirty seconds old. It's ah, just a yes. standard fourteen pool. I do that sometimes too. That sometimes that just throws me off because usually when <laughs> uh, we cast, we start with the game from the, from the first second. So if you see something like that, you're like, basically, uh, oh god, my timing is wrong. I've done that before as well. The funniest one is when, uh, oh, and he's actually going for a cannon before his nexus. That's actually a little puzzling because usually you see them go for the nexus first, try and get that out as soon as possible. I actually didn't see when that pool was made, but anyway. So yeah, sometimes like they'll get an expansion and then they'll, they'll, they'll send a bunch of SCVs down to their new expansion. And there have been a couple times when I flipped out and gone, Oh my god, he's going all in! And I'm like, oh, no, he's actually just transferring SCVs to his new base. Never mind, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> the Lynx is trying to get in now, and... Oh, I would like to see that wall in again. Yep, he's blocking it with a probe. There's only one probe, the cannon is about to finish. And that worked out very, very well. You already yep. mentioned that Salah uh, told you that Brown is a player that tries to go into the macro game, into yep. uh, the uh, end game. And the thing is, he probably experiences a lot of cheese in the ladder, especially with early links, so he knows exactly from the timings when to put down the cannon and everything. That probe was just in place to make sure that the links won't be able to get either through the wall in, and at the same time the cannon was about to finish, so even if Lucira decided to attack, he would have lost three links and get no scouting information whatsoever. That worked out oh, wow. really well by Brown. Now look at this, a probe is going to get out, he's going to try and get an extra scout off to see what he can find out about Lucira, and this is critical looking for that pylon and also that'd be good if he could send that Ling over to that probe because that probe is also going to be trying to find out if Lucira is putting down a third base or not because that is super important to find out. If he puts down the third base, Brown can relax, 
He can pour himself a drink. He can sit back in his easy chair. And he can know that he's safe from any kind of early Roachling pressure, which is something that Lucira is wont to do. Third base and coming up. Oh! Goes down. And I don't think he saw that drone going to the third base, so he has no idea that Lucira has gotten that third base. So he might be a little bit worried right now. Might want to play a little bit more defensively. But yeah, Brown in both of his games against Superstar, just Forge expanded into macro. Usually gateway heavy. Stargate follow up for Brown. He's getting that Stargate oh, on the high ground. Oh, interesting. And he needs to fly that over to the third base if he wants to apply some pressure because on the second base he won't be able to kill anything. Uh, he already connected both play, uh, bases with creep, so as soon as the Void Ray appears he will be able to uh, pull the second queen down to the expansion and then just defend with two or three queens. Should probably get a third one. Yeah, and this is this is uh, actually what he did against one of in one of his games against Superstar, just going for the quick Void Ray and a couple Phoenixes to follow up, just to put on some pressure. Not like a killing blow, not like an all-in with a lot of gateway units. Because notice he still has only the one warp gate, so he's not going to go for a massive attack here. He's just going to put on some pressure while he gets his tech going and gets his macro going, and probably even going to try and take a third base at some point, uh, if possible. Because like I said, he really wants to play the macro game. That Void Ray is already done. He's about to kill the Overlord. It's rallied right towards the Overlord so that he can take that one out. And by then, Lucira will be aware of what's happening. But he won't be all too surprised by that. He already has the Evolution Chamber in order to throw down Spore Crawlers. He's fine. Getting the Roach Warrior now at the 7 uh, 30 minute mark. And the third base is saturated as well. 52 drones against 42. The Overlord about to put the dust. It is going to bite the dust indeed. It's actually going to explode into space dust. Where does that Overlord go? Just falls into oblivion there. Um, now some more gateways coming up. He's going to start switching up into this macro mode. And again, kind of like I was saying, Brown, almost a greedy player, gutting all of this stuff off just one sentry and one cannon, and now getting a couple extra sentries. Getting that uh, Phoenix out to try and do a little scouting as well. The thing is, if you kick back as a Protoss player, then you are in a really horrible position later yeah. on because you allow the Zerg to drone up like crazy, he gets that advantage in economy and will just punish you for it. Uh, Brown will yeah. have to take that third base at some point and if Lucira is able to deny that or just prevent that for a while, he is in a decent position. We just now have the plus one attack upgrade being researched for Brown, which is very, very late. He went for the Stargate. Attack is uh, now trying to put some uh, damage onto the uh, harvesters of Lucira, but well, Lucira is just too strong for that. Too experienced. Yeah, and uh, Lucira is playing this really smart. Like you said, he's just been droning up. He actually just recently got his second, third, and fourth gases. Before that, he only had one gas. He was just getting tons of drones. Now he gets some roaches out. Very smart play to get those roaches out. Just about the time that a few zealots would arrive, and there they are. The zealots getting met by those roaches. Perfect play. There was already a spore crawler and spine crawler as well. Even the T's wouldn't have changed the thing. The void ray will be able to deal some damage to the roaches, but they already retreat. One lift off. That's well done. That roach will not live to fight another day. But at the same time, we have the third base, and oh, that queen with a little bit of a problem now taking out that tumor first. The queen will probably live though. And he's coming in with another queen though. That's going to force things back. I like how he took the moment to get that creep tumor. Very smart to pick off the tumor. It's a really quick kill when for a charged up Void Ray. He's transitioning into Colossus right now, and uh, Ulzira is on 111 supply. He has 77 drones on three bases against 60. And, well, I don't know, getting the road speed, getting Pathogen Glance, and the Station Pit is done, and he can start to put some pressure onto Brown and will probably get a fourth base fairly soon as well. Getting a spy, that's the fourth base at the bottom right. And taking uh, the sp uh, getting a spire and uh, more upgrades. Already getting the upgrade for the Overlord speed upgrade and taking a macro hatch as well. So Lu Zero just investing a lot of minerals right now so that he has enough lava, the possibility to get another base. Oh, that circling. Yeah, that's two or three circlings dying right there. Not just he, such a big deal. And he's trying to run by, but two cannons already. He almost caught all the zerglings. Now he will catch most of the zerglings. 
Beautiful play there by Brown, taking those Zerglings out. Is he going to lose a probe? He loses one probe. He's going to lose. Nope. Not going to lose any other probe. Oh, he does get another probe. Nicely done. But um, that is part of the strategy of sending out those Void Rays is he cleared out all those Overlords. There was no Overlords to run in and take a peek at what tech he's going. So he's going for the inf these Infestors. He doesn't have a Spire. Okay, now he almost has a Spire, actually, but he didn't get a Spire earlier. And he's not really going to have anything for these Colossus too early. I really don't like what Brown is doing right now. Lucira will be on four bases. He has five hatcheries already. He's getting the Hive tech. He's getting a massive amount of upgrades. He's getting Infestors. And he will be able, if Brown isn't putting pressure on the Zerg player, he will just be able to get those Brood Lords, get the Infestors as well, and a bunch of Roaches at the back. He's already now throwing down a lot of Spine Crawlers. And that's something that Brown doesn't want to encounter. That's a really, really strong unit composition. And if you have to face that as a Protoss player, you have to micro perfectly in the fights if you want to take out those Brute Lords. So being in a situation like that, that's something Brown doesn't want. He needs to do some early pressure to the Zira. And right now he gives the Zerg player all the time he needs in order to prepare for that army composition. Can you check to see if he saw that Twilight Council? I'm curious if he saw that or not. Yep, just a tiny second. And yeah, he, he did see it. the Twilight Council as well. Okay, so yeah. So Lucira definitely ha knows exactly what's going on with Brown's strategy here. He saw the robotic support bait as well. So he definitely knows what's going on. And Brown trying to take a fourth base here. Again, just keeping his macro going. Lucira making 13 more drones in his greater spire right now. Making some corruptors as well. So yeah, Brown... You know what? He's like, all right, I'm just going to sit back and macro. But Lucira's like, you know what? I'm just going to sit back and macro also. What are you going to do about it? And he's going to have some really scary tech when Brown finally attacks. Lucira is just occupying his opponent. And Brown walking on to creep with that small force is actually, well, that's... I don't know, that's a little bit optimistic. If he continues too far, he will be caught out of position. Oh, those force fields just in time. Oh. Nice. Oh, and he targets the Colossus on the units trapped in those force fields. So he kills them all with a few swipes. And this Void Ray over here is doing some major damage in the meantime. Corruptor does finally finish that off. But, uh, yeah, I mean, this <laughs> it's like they both said, all right, no rush 15. You Lucira. know, let's get straight to the late game and not bother with this early game business. Luzira is going for that uh, army composition that I just mentioned. He's about to finish his the Great Aspire. He already has the Corruptor. And he's building He's building too many drones right now. He's on a 92 already, 91. Now starting to get more spying crawlers on the map. So that he's in a very good position to defend, uh, if he defend against pushes like that. Six, six Brood Lords. There are the Ooh. Fungals. Nice dodging the force fields. Luzira is just playing very, very well right now, and Brown with 180 supply on four bases, he will have his work cut out for him as soon. Oh, nice. Another fungal would kill all of the wow. Slokas. Beautiful. So Beautifully well done. done. He did not let those go. He kept falling back behind those row of morphing spine crawlers, and then running forward, getting a fungal off, running back, running forward, getting fungal off. Perfect timing on that. Luzira is ready. Luzira has the Brood Lords, he has the Infestors, and now Brown will have to show us his micro or he will oh. lose that fight. And I don't know what he can do actually here. The, he's fungling those Stalkers so well that they cannot blink away. The Brood Lords doing some major damage as well. And here's the thing is, you know, ideally what people do to deal with the Brood Lords is they get Blink Stalkers and they blink right underneath the Brood Lords and, kill, and snipe them. But if the Broodlords are sitting on top of Zerglings and Infestors, then blinking underneath them is suicide. So Lucira continues to creep across the middle of the map with these spine crawlers. What Lucira is doing right now, he starts to build more and more spine crawlers in order to free up supply. He is on 85 drones right now. He was on 95 a few minutes ago. So he's freeing up a little bit of supply so that he can get more army supply. He's getting a second spire for the double upgrades. He's already researching plus three upgrade for Lynx and Brood Lords. And that, oh, Mothership. Mothership now for <laughs> Brown. Oh, wow. That might help him a bit. That might help him a bit with the Vortex. He needs to get a really good vortex that would that be beautiful war prison that we just saw didn't do any damage at all will Sira on top of his game right now but yeah the vortex would be really really nice and that might be one thing that he can do in order to deal with the Sira's army composition but still four bases and again again against five and I don't know 
I like how Lucera, he knows that Warp Prism is on the map, so he's actually getting a couple Spine Crawlers in his main as well. And oh, he sees the Fleet Beacon! Nice. He sees the Fleet Beacon. He may consider twice uh, morphing all of those Corruptors into Broodlords. He may save a couple as Corruptors in order to have that anti-air. Lucera actually sacrificed his base, is running past the opponent's army with the Zerglings. But now he... Oh! If those if those stalkers oh. blink, he will be in a lot of trouble, but they don't, and the fungals are going off. Oh. The Zergling streaming in, trying to fungal his opponents. Colossus as well. Look at that round is losing everything. He will lose his entire army. All oh, the Colossi are dying. Are Beautiful just, oh. fungals. Oh my gosh. Usually links are suicide if they attack Colossus, but all they did was buy enough time for four or five fungals to go down on everything. Everything gets fungled. And Lucira comes out ahead, but there is a mothership in play now. And it is just biding its time until it has enough energy for some super spell. Here comes a warp prison coming in the back. For a second I thought we were watching a replay at 2x speed because it has the speed upgrade. It's gonna warp in a couple stalkers. Nice choice before pop Oh no, the stalkers get canceled. Lucera is on top of this man. Yeah, he already has 10 Broodlords. He's getting the armor upgrade for his fly. He's getting the plus 2 attack upgrade. He's rebuilding his base. Maxed out 170 for Brown. Wow, this is ridiculous. Brown now taking his 5th base. And getting that saturated up right now. Uh, Lucera is still also on 5 bases. And this is a situation where, you know, the Zerg wants to be ahead on bases, but if you can get it straight to this late game and he, if, if Brown can hold out and split the map, he's going to have a little bit of advantage with a plus split map scenario. Another attempt with a war prism, but there are already spine crawlers and Lucera is now going for that base. He's going for the base at the bottom. He's going to take that out. The Brood Lords are in the position to do that. And the Dark Shrine so for Brown, buildings. he wants to get sneaky now and he really needs to. I don't... I mentioned it before, Brown is just playing a bit weird, but on the other hand, if he's able to take out Lucera's unit once, then he will might get back into that game, but Lucera is on top of this. He's always fungling at the right moment in time, he's fungling like crazy, and that mothership with 11, with 8 investors on the, the field, that mothership has a slight problem because Fungal obviously detects cloaked units as well. He yep. needs to somehow use Good his point. Vortex in order to split armies, that would give him an edge over his opponent, but Lucera it's just playing perfect right now. Yep, he does have the uh, Templar Archives out. He's got an Archon on the field. He's getting the Dark Shrine down. He's gonna try and do some DT harassment, which I don't think will do much good. I believe Lucera has spores at all of his bases right now. Um, but Lucera is just playing beautifully. He's got all these high-tech units, and he's not losing them. He hasn't been losing his Broodlords. He hasn't been losing many Infestors. Uh, he has a bunch of Corruptors on the map now as well. Even uh, though that it's just disgusting. Even though the match worked really like uh, Lucera 182 with getting his army composition and everything, he was smart enough to just crawl up in his main bases, go for the Sparklers as well, so that that he doesn't get surprised by any drop play. And now there's once again Brown just poking in. But Lucera has so many spine crawlers. He's really keeping his minerals low. He's always trying to get more spine crawlers and defending in his base. Look at that! All. Everywhere, there are everywhere oh. enough spine crawlers to deal with that. He's fungling as well. This is just fungling so the, well done. The DTs to make sure they cannot escape the range of the spine crawlers. Look at this! Run, run, run! And it does, <laughs> it does survive. Look at all those broodlings. This is that DT got attacked by 15 broodlord, but broodlings. And, and those are 3-3 three, three Broodlings, by the way. Yeah, he's getting more and more upgrades for his air units as well. The plus 2 armor, the plus 3 attack, getting more spine crawlers now. And he's still on 200 supply, has enough minerals. He has like 2,000 and 1,000 gas. Lucera is just playing so well. And, he, and he's not overextending. He's not just trying to go for an attack like, okay, I have to attack now. He's playing it patient. There's that's the double, exactly what you need to do. Double Spire upgrades. Lucera is so maxed that he's like, I'm right, I'm just going to get all the upgrades. Upgrade all the things, he says. And uh, man, this is like, you know, I was talking to Sella, and Sella said he thought it was going to be long games because they're both macro players. And uh, ooh, a storm goes, ooh, a couple storms tried to catch those corruptors but did not pull it off. But this looks like what you would see at like minute 40. But it's. It's minute 25. It's, you know, they had the latest game, highest tech maxed armies at like minute 19. 
this has been ridiculous. The only thing that I can think of that w uh, would win Brown the game is like if he's able to either get off a beautiful vo uh, vortex or if he's able to take out the infestors with uh, feedback. That's the only thing that I can think of right now that will win uh, decide the game in Brown's uh, uh, in Brown's favor because. Luzira has like 70 Corruptors, he will take out the Mothership and yeah. the Colossi so super fast and he has 18 Broodlords. Yeah, if those disgusting. 8 Infestors are able to get their Fungals off, I don't know how Brown is supposed to win that game. Now the Templar might have a different story to tell because if he can get off some good feedbacks and yeah. storms, exactly. that is the thing that could possibly save him. Look at this, Brown knows that his army is inferior, sacrificing some probes so that he can add on some carriers. What? Double Stargate coming what? up. But now, is that the point in time where Luzira is going to attack? He needs oh, to be careful with... Oh! oh the Templar right there. He needs to get... Oh! Preemptive Storm. And Luzira now. dodges the Storm. He's going to take out this base again. Look at those Broodlords. Oh my god. And the Fungal on the Mothership and everything. Where's the Vortex? And he needs to move oh. into the Vortex. Beautiful, he's moving oh. in. The Storms hit him. And this is going to be an exciting moment in that game. Once again, Fungal in the army. And oh. here we go. It's oh. Oh. Archon Toilet. Oh, everything popping to the splash damage. Oh. The Archons oh. kill everything. The Archons kill everything. He's and able to get that Vortex. He's able to get Whoa. that vortex that he needed. That was the one thing that could kill Lucira, and he's able to pull it off. His army supply dropped in the blink of an eye, like with a hundred down to a hundred. Oh, oh my God! God! And Brown now with all of his stalkers remaining, and those Colossi rolls over the spine crawler defenses. The Broodlords are under attack while they're morphing. That's his last dish defense is those last few Broodlords. Only one gets out. Brown but with a beautiful Vortex may have clinched the game. Don't count Lazira out just yet. He's on 160 supply. He's getting off the fungus. He still has the resources to build more units. But the Lost carrier's on the way. The loss of the morphing Broodlords was a huge deal. But now he might be able to get back into the game. He's able to get more fungus off that get would fungus be off. Pretty damn good in that situation. Are the Broodlords oh! going to move? GG, they are the Storms and Feedbacks finally forced Lucira out of the game. And Slayer's Brown takes a sip of water like it was nothing. Wow. Sella. <laughs> oh, I love this game. And Lucira is like, what the hell was I supposed to do against that? <laughs> The well, you know what he was supposed to do is not throw every single one of his units into the vortex. The thing is that for Luzira, it was really like he had it played so well. He had the patience, he got the upgrades, he had the army that he needed. And I mentioned that in the game. The only things that could kill him was either if Luzira would lose all the infestors so he couldn't get the fungals, or if he uh, would per place down the perfect vortex and he did that as well, soon as the corruptors went in for the kill for the mothership he actually yeah, casted them up he could try to attack from two sides with the with the he had so many corruptors he the could try to attack from two sides no you're right but as soon as the corruptors went in for the kill the vortex came and he moved in with the brute lords as well as soon as he saw that he just spent all his icons threw them in the and uh, well the well, well here's just raped him. here's the thing is you're right, the Corruptors came in to get the, the Mothership, boom, Vortexes them, perfect move. Lucira sees this happen, All right. so Brown, what does he do? He throws his Archons in the Vortex. What does Lucira do? He throws 15 Broodlords into the Vortex! Why? Why did he do that? I mean, the thing is, Sometimes they use a vortex to split the army and you throw all your units in the vortex so they all come out at once so they're not just fighting half the army and then the other half. But if you see the three Archons go in there, you don't throw all your Broodlords in that vortex. One thing that was quite important as well though was, I mean, he dropped oh. with like 100 supply in that situation. But he had enough lava and he had oh. resources to come back. But 
with Brown attacking, and Brown actually scouted for those Broodlords, for those morphing Broodlords. Lucera tried yeah. to morph six of them. All of them were killed no, that's while, a good while point. morphing. And after that, Lucera <coughs> tried the same thing again, but Brown was there in order to prevent those Broodlords from uh, coming back into that game. And that ended the game for Lucera entirely. He was already behind at that point, but he prepared like kind of for something like that. But Brown was just relentless. He attacked straight away. He knew now's my chance, and he and now. And that's what he did. No, you're exactly correct. If he had, because he had a couple infestors still, he had some other stuff coming. He had a lot of units coming out. If those broodlords had been back behind, and then uh, when he was coming up the ramp, he could fungal the ramp and use broodlords on the ramp, then yeah, that would have been a completely different story. Instead, he didn't have any broodlords when Brown charged up his ramp. And, uh, wow. Uh, as much as I would love to talk about that game all night, game number two is beginning. We're going to get into it and find out if Brown can close the series out.